In the world of software development, it's pretty well known that developers have what's known as a tech stack and designers have their own tools that are also relatively well established. But as product managers, we end up doing a little bit of a lot of different things. So what is the toolkit of a product manager? If you're interested in starting in a product role and want to know some of the tools of the trade or get primed on what sort of things to expect to be using, or if you're already a PM and are interested in hearing what other product managers are using, this video is for you. Before we start, let's be very clear about one thing. No amount of shiny, fancy tools is going to turn shitty product management into great product management. But in the same way that giving a really fancy set of knives to a great chef can help them do their jobs in an easier and more joyful way, having great tools to do your product management with can make it much easier to collaborate to build really great products. My name's Izzy. I'm Gabe. And today we're talking about the tools that we use as product managers. When we had a look at our laptops, we realized we use a ton <laughs> of different products, more than we probably expected. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we've broken them up into the different stages that are a part of shipping great products. And we're gonna talk about them in those stages. Those are creating strategy and product vision, understanding users and sharing that understanding with our teams, capturing new ideas for features, communicating what we know and what we find out, workshopping and brainstorming, and defining and measuring the success of the things that we build. As a bonus, we'll also talk about some of the tools that we use to help us get shit done, regardless of what we're doing. This is just sort of the tools that we use in our day to day. And keep in mind that everybody works differently, but let's dive into what has been really helpful and effective for us. Every great product starts with a vision and a strategy. So this means crafting a clear path and inspiring people to walk it with you by creating really strong and compelling narratives. So to do this, we primarily use Confluence and Keynote. Confluence is a collaborative writing tool, uh, similar to something like Google Docs. And we use this to develop our thinking. We often find that writing is actually the best form of thinking mm -hmm. and to collaborate with other people on that writing and on that thinking. Mm. There are no really great strategies or visions that are made by one person going and sitting in a room alone and doing it all. So that collaboration is super important. What we'll typically do here is draft up a document, get our thinking down on paper, virtual paper, and then circulate it with the team for them to leave comments and feedback on. And then that strategy and that vision is sort of being iterated together and being informed by the engineering strategy and, and the design vision. And so everyone's really building it cohesively together. Keynote is the slides tool that we use for visual communication. We find that once you develop that strategy and that vision, it's often much more effective when you're sharing it out to a wide range of stakeholders to do that in a really visual way. It's absolutely true that a picture is worth a thousand words. Next up is understanding our users so we can build that empathy for them, understand the problems they're facing and therefore understand where there might be opportunities for us to help them out. We also need to make sure that we're communicating these findings to our teams so that they are empowered to make great decisions based on what our users want. To do this, we use three tools primarily. Number one is Dovetail, number two is Jira Service Management, and number three is Amplitude. And a lot of Zoom. And so much Zoom. <laughs> so Dovetail is basically a repository for virtual user interviews. So when we're interviewing a user, we'll record it on Zoom and then upload it to Dovetail. It has some really neat features like letting you tag particular insights or themes from your interviews. It does automatic transcription of the interview. Um, and it basically lets you sift through the masses of data that you're getting from your users and draw out meaningful insights and share that with your team. We use something called Jira Service Management, which enables us to capture in-product feedback from our users. And this means that we always have a pulse on the feedback users are leaving us within the products themselves. Often as they feel that frustration, they can go and leave that feedback. And that's really helpful for us. And finally, we use Amplitude, which is an analytics tool to figure out where users are dropping off or having trouble completing a certain task within the product. So this provides a quantitative way to identify where opportunities might be for improvement in the product to support the qualitative analysis that we do as well. All right, next up, to capture and prioritize product opportunities and collaborate with our teams to figure out what to build when, we use a product called Jira Product Discovery. So this allows us to really easily capture opportunities that we identify and you can share the link with your team so your team can go in and help you collaborate on prioritizing different ideas according to things like engineering effort, business impact, user value, and basically stack rank what you're going to build when. Yeah, I really love this one because often I feel like the prioritization process for a PM can be very opaque mm. and this gives a really 
really clear way for engineering teams and other stakeholders to come in and actually be engaged in that, which is awesome. We also have a Chrome plugin to very easily capture opportunities. So, you know, you can be browsing the web or reading through user feedback and really easily just use keyboard shortcuts to record a new idea as you go. Next, it's really important for product managers to communicate their findings and communicate their ideas with their team more broadly. You want to create that shared brain where everybody has the same understanding of the problem space and the mission so that they can make great decisions as a team. For this, we use Confluence and Loon. So we've already talked about what Confluence is, but in this particular case, Confluence can act as a hub for basically capturing and synthesizing a whole bunch of different information from a range of different sources. And it allows us to collaborate, get input from the team, and then iterate on the ideas or thoughts that we're having as we go. Whilst Confluence allows that longer form written communication, Loon is a platform that enables us to quickly capture video of ourselves speaking and of our screens so that we can share ideas in a more sort of fluid way. Like this, for example, rather than writing anything down, I just press two buttons and I am recording. Particularly in a remote first world, it can be really helpful instead of trying to write something down painstakingly and perfectly to just capture yourself talking about something naturally and send that through to your team. And we use that a lot as an alternative to writing it. It's also a really, really good alternative to like face to face or virtual Zoom meetings. If you've got something that you want to share with somebody on your screen or you just want to like talk through a concept instead of needing to dig through a calendar and book time on everyone's calendars, which can be really hard to do, you can just send a quick async video and then people can review it in their own time, which makes it far easier. Okay, the next step is after we've got some ideas or opportunities, we often need to workshop the solution with our teams. So this means a good old workshopping or brainstorming session. The number one tool we use for this is FigJam, which is a virtual whiteboard. Now it's so helpful, again, in this remote world where you often can't stand in front of a physical whiteboard to get a bunch of brains together, thinking about the same problem and being able to communicate and collaborate in that really unstructured visual way that only a whiteboard can do. The other one that we use is actual physical whiteboards. <laughs> They're a bit of a luxury these days, but when we do have the luxury of having everybody together in one place, there is nothing better than getting everyone standing in front of that one wall and being able to draw and scribble things out and write bits and pieces and connect ideas all together. Next thing is the features that we build usually represent hypotheses. If we make it easier for a user to do X, they are more likely to go and do Y. So it's really important when we ship a feature to measure the success of that feature. In other words, where you write about the hypothesis. For this, we use Amplitude, which we talked about before, and it allows us to go in and really carefully understand whether particular cohorts of users are seeing the benefit that we expect them to see, or whether we still need to do more things to try and solve that particular problem for them. Now we also want to talk about a few of our go-to tools that we're using at every stage of the process. So these are the things that we use to be productive and get shit done day to day. We usually have multiple projects going at any one time and they're usually at different stages of the product discovery delivery life cycle, which means that we always have a million things to do and it's really important to keep track of all of them and what stage each of the tasks are at. So to do this, I use a Trello board and I use things, but there are a million of these different tasks, tracking apps. And the most important thing is to use whichever one works for you. Then there's also a few of the absolute classic ones. We use a lot of Slack, a lot of Google calendar and far, far, far too much zoom. And finally, a few things that keep us sane and productive throughout. Number one is freedom, which we've talked about pretty extensively before, mm -hmm. uh, but it enables us to block all of the distracting shit that we don't want to do. Um, and don't want to get distracted by so that we can focus on the most important things. We also use Spotify. I mean, who doesn't love a little bit of work music to get in the zone? I'll often put on like three hours of white noise background to just help me focus or good old lo-fi always does the job as well. And finally, a physical notebook. Now I know that might seem <laughs> so archaic and you might go, why do you work at a tech company if you use a physical notebook? But I maintain that it is the best way to be able to write down ideas and scribble things out and just get thinking down literally on paper. So you will never find me without a physical notebook. Now, all of those tools have been stupendously helpful for us in helping us do our jobs and helping us enjoy doing our jobs. Mm. But let's just circle quickly back to one thing, which is that the tools are not the job. Confronting the messiness and the complexity of trying to create great products is the job and the tools are there to help us to do that. So we have to make sure that we're not getting distracted by those shiny objects, which we sometimes do, 
in the same way that I, as a very amateur chef, need to not get distracted by getting shiny, fancy new knives. I need to actually just focus on honing my craft of cooking things well. I can't do that yet, but I'm trying. <laughs> Better than I can. That being said, great tools used for the right things can help us to do those all important PM things of understanding our users, sharing that insight with the team, planning effectively, and making sure that the things that we're shipping are having the impact that we want them to have. Simply put, great tools are the ones that get out of our way and help us do the things that really matter. All right, that's the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed hearing about the tools that we use to help our jobs as product managers. Let us know what tools you use down in the comments below. If you did like this video and you wanna see more videos like this from us, let us know in the comments, leave us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.